Well, you may know that last week, OpenAI launched ChatGPT5, touting, quote, significant advancements in artificial intelligence capabilities. As a global race over the technology accelerates, this new model has been praised by some users, but also highly criticized by others. So joining us live now for an AI pulse check is Mohit Rajins. Uh, Mohit, great to see you again. So let's talk about ChatGPT5. I only just heard about it because people were, you know, it was kind of blowing up over social media, people being unhappy with with it, but what exactly is it, and is it better than the old model? Yeah, this is this ongoing history of artificial intelligence. You know, this idea that we need all these updates is a little bit of a misnomer. But the truth is, GPT-5 has rolled out and we're talking about, you know, close to, what, 700 million worldwide users of this product in less than two and a half years. That is G Chat GPT. And Chat GPT-5 is a great improvement. I'm a user. I'm the type of person that sees how many people will benefit from being able to use it. Friends, we are running into a little bit of a problem here. We have a product, we have a public relations issue, and then we have the public issue. And I think they're all sort of going ahead at the same time. It's interesting, you know, and so much of, or at least, you know, part of this is kind of free. And so, but people never, you know, are afraid to voice their concerns and complaints. You know, when Facebook changes, when Instagram changes, everyone starts to complain here. What are the sort of main complaints about this new chat GPT-5 Mohit? Oh, this is actually a very interesting part. It's mainly from the business community. Mm -hmm. As you can imagine, AI is a bunch of stack of cards. So they're still being built on each other. And so as you can imagine, people who were early adopters and had early forms of GPT infused in their business operations, they're starting to have to go back and audit and figure out what it is that they have to clean up because everything was built on tested material of mm -hmm. older models. Now, the other part of it, of course, is, you know, some people are a little whiny about their AI. They want it a certain <laughs> way. They want it to, to give the answers that make them feel smart and stuff. And maybe this version of ChatGPT is actually doing a little bit more thinking, as they say, and that's troubling to some. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay, so is ChatGPT 5 free or is it something you have to pay for, like a subscription, to, in order to use it? Yeah, that's another great point. What ended up happening with this rollout, and this is where the PR problem started, is the fact that ChatGPT Plus and Pro members were able to play with it first. And therefore, they started to change the way that they were starting to use it. Mm. And then, of course, the free people that have been using it were like, well, wait a minute. Does the stuff that I did back in two years ago still work? And is it still relevant? Remember, the early versions of GPT, ChatGPT, were trained on old internet and up mm. to a certain date. So these updates have to do with actually starting starting to scrape more of the internet to create some of this generative content. Hmm, interesting. And then there's also not a scrape, but a scrap between sort of OpenAI Sam Altman and Elon Musk from X in terms of app favoritism when it comes to these sort of AI apps. Uh, what is exactly at the heart of this dispute then? I'm going to be honest with you. It's a little bit troub troublesome when two-fifths of the major AI leadership in this world are going at each other like they're frat boys. Hmm. Elon Musk and Sam Altman originally started in OpenAI together as a non-for-profit. And now they're going through this weird sort of technology test of each other's AI. You know, uh, Elon Musk has XAI and Grok and tries to boast about having the best models, as they say. And Sam Altman is saying, well, wait a minute. We got the best one on market. But people, we are fighting about the wrong things here. Mm -hmm. These are two multi-billionaires that are going at each other in public. They're actually causing more stress to people not wanting to do business with their AI and maybe turning to some of the more traditional ones like Microsoft and Google, because you can't risk this much amount of technology and innovation based on two people in the moods that they're in. Yeah. Yeah. OK. And Mohe, why should we really care about this feud between Musk and Altman? Well, like I mentioned before, there's still two fifths of the largest impactful technology change that we're seeing right now. And so we can't ignore the fact that they actually have their fingers on the pulse of some of the most impactful technology. And whether people use ChatGPT or OpenAI products, we have to make sure that we understand that this is going to change the more we start to use it and the more we start to depend on it. And we can't, unfortunately, let this PR side of it get in the way. Hmm. It's great that we're turning to a human to talk more about <laughs> AI. He is an AI and media consultant from ThinkStars, uh, pardon me, uh, thinkstart.ca, Mohit Rajans. Appreciate this, Mohit. Thanks so much. Thank you.